Good morning. This is Wendy at Chickawoof Ranch. And I've brought you out to the milking station this morning. <clears throat> this happens to be my La Mancha cookie that's in milk. And this is her second freshening. And she is awesome. Just love the way she's turned out. She's easy and fast to milk. But really, why we're out here this morning is I've had a request. Got to watch that. I've had a request for doing a video on milking an unruly goat. Or basically a goat that hasn't been trained to the milk stand yet or having a hard time of it. So anyway, join me as I go through my milking routine and, and uh, I'm going to show you a couple of girls this morning that I will be retraining to the milking stand. They have been in milk. This, I have to look. This is their, probably their fourth freshening with us, meaning they've kitted four times and this is their fourth time to come in to milk. Gotta watch for the flies. So, I have left their babies on them this year because I had a lot of goats in milk. I, um, we don't need that much milk. And also, they had boys. So, we have banded them and they will be weathers and they will find new homes. But uh, during that time, while um, I'm just letting them raise their babies because I don't need the milk and they'll get healthy and bigger that way by leaving them on. And so, and it alleviates extra chores for me. So this is Cookie and she's nearly done. She kicked a few times, but that's not her. It's the flies. Gotta watch for the flies. And there it is. this morning and this is one that is Lieutenant Uhura. Uh, she was from our Star Trek year and she is in her first freshening and she is doing really well. She's one of my favorites um, because her, her handles are easy um, so her udder and her teats are nice and she milks out fast because the orifice, the opening on the teat is nice and large, so she goes pretty quickly. And she stands well. So she, as a result of first time freshening, she chose not to feed her babies. She had what we call bottle babies. She just wouldn't nurse them. And so, at any rate, we fed them. So her babies have been long gone for a while, at least a month, that we sold them. And so I've been milking her once or twice a day. I've mostly resigned to once a day now, after a couple of months in, just because it gets so daunting. And, uh, you know, open up the time for the evening. So, at any rate, this is Lieutenant Uhura, her first freshening, and I really didn't have any problems with her from the very get-go. So we had to give her babies everything, their first colostrum and, and all of it. So um, the reason why she did really well is because she knew that this stand meant food. We, if nothing else, we trained them to this stand for trimming their feet. So they're used to that, 
from the time they're a baby coming in here and hopping up here and getting a reward. So that's, that's the first way I start a goat from a kid up to adult. And if I were to bring a new goat onto the farm, I, even if she wasn't in milk, I would occasionally get them up here from the get-go just to feed them so that they can get used to this is a reward situation. So I'm nearly done with her. So I like these fast milkers. My 10 minute milkers are a little bit tougher on the wrists, but uh, yeah, she does well. She will probably produce even more next year just because she will um, have freshened before. So their first freshening, they don't produce as much and it usually just improves from there. So there we go. This is my teat dip for afterwards. I squeeze it and it fills up and I've got my mixture in here. Reason why I do that is she doesn't have any babies on her as I said and um, because I've milked her she could be, I don't know if really the term is dilated, but, but the opening can remain enlarged for a little while. So this helps prevent bacteria getting up there and causing an infection such as mastitis or something else. So this is Lieutenant. Next up is Luna. Luna is one that I let go for about two weeks and didn't get her up on the milk stand because she had triplets this year. So she is a cousin to Lieutenant Uhura here, and she is one that it took me, oh, she was doing very well by the end of five to seven days, but uh, about two weeks in, she was doing really good. So I will show you, um, hopefully, that she behaves as well. Uh, when she comes in. Okay, this is Luna. Luna had triplets and I didn't get her up on the milk stand for a couple of weeks. Um, I knew I was going to be milking her because she is a fair prospect. So Daphne will be showing her at our county fair. So uh, that's why I knew for sure, goat hair, uh, that I was going to be getting her up on the stand. Just besides the fact with triplets, you know, somebody doesn't get enough. That's just the way it goes. So anyway, she did lots of tap dancing in the beginning and it, it, it was rough. So now she's really graduated to the point where unless there's some sort of outside noise, something going on in the barn, mower, um, the dogs get excited and run out, something you know external that causes her uh, flies even, but that's usually short-lived. And we've got our fly spray here if they're just really terrible that I'll just grab, grab my fly spray. And so she's, she's excited enough to eat that she flinched a little bit, but not a big deal. So anyway, this is Luna and she was my project by accident this year. I realized about two weeks into kidding that I haven't tried to get her up on the milk stand at all. And so it was a little bit rough. So next up is going to be two girls that were born and bred on our farm. Most everybody has been now. We've got a few, I've got about four that I purchased that we brought onto the farm over the last eight years. But other than that, mostly everybody has been born and bred on our farm. So they may have received a bottle in the past because we did lots of bottle feeding to help gentle them. But 
What I'm going to show you next is two girls that have been milked for at least three or four freshenings in the past, but I've left their babies on them. The reason why we did that for us this year is because number one, they had a couple of boys. Number two, I didn't need all the milk. And so that basically alleviated me doing so many goats. If I milked everyone every morning, it would be seven goats. What's nice about doing the mama baby share thing is that you can kind of decide how many. I have some milk customers right now that are lined up and I need more milk because I've kind of I've got the demand. So we pin the baby separate from the mamas at night and then we milk milk off the first morning's milk and then we leave the babies out with the mamas for the rest of the day. So that's kind of your milk sharing. You get some and they get some. And then it's a supply and demand kind of thing. So they're not deprived, plus most all of them are, let's see, two, uh, two months old at least now. So they start grazing at about two weeks of age. So they're not really drinking lots of milk. Now they are super excited because they've been pinned up this morning. But anyway, so, so this is Luna. She was my project and you can see how well she's standing now. So next up I'll show you um, Dottie or Belle and show you how I'm going to work through it. It's going to be a challenge and uh, hopefully it will help give you some tips on training an unruly or a first time freshener for yourself. Okay, this is the first thing I'm going to do to prepare for my goat retraining to the stand. I'm going to take some prairie hay and I'm going to put it back here in her feed. I'm going to set it in there because I'm going to pour her feed over the top of it. The reason why I'm going to do this is because she most likely is going to be fed up with me and done with the whole process and she's going to gobble her food down and it's going to take longer so I need something to distract her. So by putting in the prairie hay, by putting in the prairie hay first and pouring her feed over the top of it, it's going to fall down in and she can't just gobble it up. She's going to be busier searching and looking, so it's going to buy me more time. So that's tip number one. Are you wondering what I'm doing with all this milk as I'm going through all the goats? Right here. I don't remember how big it is. Don't ask me. It's big. Big enough for me. Um, is my stainless steel bucket with a lid. Seals very nice and the reason why is because I'm going to take, this is what I just got from Luna. See how much she produces in her first year? But my goodness, she had triplets on her. So I take the milk and I pour it into there, set my milk pail down, seal this up so that it sits off to the side and no bugs, you know, nothing falls into it so it's sealed and taken care of and this is how I will carry it to the house. I have one other bucket This is my backup bucket, especially when I'm milking in the evening. And in the evening, I only had three maximum. I was milking in the evening for a while. So it is like this, and the lid fits on like that. And it will hold, oh, it will hold a gal, I don't know if it'll hold two gallons. It will definitely hold somewhere between a gallon and two. And when I'm confident in milking and taking the risk of nobody's going to put their foot in the bucket, then I just bring this one out 
milk straight into it. I can cover it between goats, but then I'm not dirtying two containers. So when you're doing multiples, I have my smaller pail that I use. I milk into this. That way if somebody steps in it, knocks it over, and I have to do a quick cleaning or quick rinse, this is it. So very easy, milk into this, transfer. Um, so there's a few tips. Okay, this is Belle, and she has not been milked all season. Now, this could be old hat for her. Wash her up first, and no tickling. Be confident in what you do. Have a firm grip. So, kind of feel like your mom or your grandma taking your wash rag and really scrubbing it up. It's good. And then same thing, dry her off. Okay, and we'll see how she goes. Oh wait, don't grab, don't, don't tickle, be firm. And a lot of times I'll hold one bucket in this hand, grab the teat, let her know I'm making contact, and be ready to grab the bucket, pick it up. She lifted that leg. Sometimes you can hold the bucket and just work with one hand. This is hard for a beginner. I wouldn't recommend this for somebody who hasn't milked goats, but if you're in this situation, so I've got her going, I'm holding the bucket, and I'm milking with my left hand. I'm gonna set it down. The handle is gonna be facing towards me because if it faces towards her hoof, the likelihood of her tap dancing around and her hoof grabbing the handle and tipping the bucket is likely. So I keep the bucket hugged up close to me and just go away. Um, I keep my eyes pretty well in contact with her. She's doing fine. She has been a pro in the past, so it doesn't look like we're gonna have many issues with her. Um, this one teat right now has a little second off spray, so if that happens, um, I just kind of reach up and try and fix it. I'm going to pull the bucket away though because of the situation. And I'm just checking to see on the very tip of the teat if there's a hair or something that I missed because you get kind of that two strand spray. So I kept contact with her. I'm still, if I were to let go, sometimes I put my arm, put my hand up and just make contact with her. Being firm and confident in all that I do. Here's my bucket, there's my handle, and away we go. So, and like I said for Belle, this is fourth, fifth freshening. I'd have to look back. She was born and raised on our farm. She was a triplet, a set of triplets herself. And so the last girl that you saw, Luna, is her girl. So... Looks like she's going to do pretty well, other than it's just going to be a little slower um, going. She milks out just fine, um, just not a real expedient milker. So, okay. Well, I'm betting her sister Dottie is going to show you a little more action. Okay, I'm nearing the end with Belle. She's starting to tap dance a little bit. And this is what I do, is that they start tap dancing. I just place my hand firmly on her udder and I don't let go for whatever reason. I let her know that I'm going to win. So her food is starting to run out, but the prairie hay is working. And so now she's got to sift and search for all those little pieces. So that buys me time and will buy you time rather than keep reloading and reloading and, and really overfeeding until you get the hang of it. Caught it, which I've done. So 
nearing the end when there's not much milk left and if they start kicking I will just milk one-handed holding the bucket um, sometimes with some of them I've actually had to tilt the bucket back towards me and up and go up higher so that they can't reach their foot into the bucket so this side is about done sometimes you can um, are stronger with one hand more than the other so when I'm on the left side sometimes I have to use my left hand and so see I had to kind of reach in there and she wasn't really thrilled with that but it's okay so I tilt the bucket back so if she reaches up with her foot to kick then I'm good okay so finish up on this side there's a little bit left so you really just have to hang in there and you want you want to win and the endurance wins out and they will tame down and realize that they're getting a reward at the same time it does work i'm going to set it down because I feel comfortable about that, that I can get out the last bits. Sometimes you end up shooting it all over um, the stand. It happens, let it happen, whatever. Okay. Okay. She's done. I got my little table over here that you can't see. And here's the dip. And even sometimes when you come back in for a touch, I usually take my hand again, kind of make contact with her, a firm contact. And you can actually take the udder and then and kind of move it into position. Dip it in there, make sure that it's dripping. And other one, they know it's coming, dip it. And then for us, we just throw it out the other side. So that's it. This is Belle. She didn't give me much trouble. Um, so for your sake, I'm hoping that Dottie does a little more action. Um, I'm pretty sure she will. So here it is. I'll go over here, pour it out, and her sister's next. Here's Patsy. I've got her all prepped. This is her second freshening on our farm, and she has done absolutely wonderful. I can see her flinching a little bit right now, but it's because of some flies. So, this isn't what's really in it. It did have it in there, but then we made our own. So, we can, I, we can share that recipe down below. Same thing, I always, turn, I always turn my bucket towards me just so that if they were to kick at a fly or something, it wouldn't grab it and, and cause the milk to go everywhere. Patsy does really well. She stands really well. And even when she's done with her food, um, and like I said, she was born and raised on our farm. Last year was a sad year because she decided when she wanted bread last year. Uh, we made a video on that. I might uh, link that up here somewhere. That at any rate, I didn't realize that she was due when she was. I thought it was a month later. And of course, the one cold day we had that year, she had her babies and I came out to dead babies. So she has not raised any, so she did have two this year and they were bottle babies. Shocker. She wasn't interested in feeding them and a lot of that could be because she didn't feed her babies last year. So it, it didn't happen. So, at any rate, she does stand very well, and I do not have a lot of trouble with her. And once again, it's because we start them up here as a reward for foot trimming, eating. If I need to move a goat around, 
this, these are some of kind of um, the tips that I've used. She's standing really well, but if she was too close to me or particularly too far, I reach through on the other side over here and grab her, and then you just kind of push them. Pulling one leg is not gonna, you know, get a good result. So sometimes they'll hunch down like this. I just grab and pull over and keep moving until they basically square up. So she's just fine. And a lot of times as a precaution, when I reach under, I have my bucket here after I've had to do that and then go back, set it down, start milking a little of the fat hand, make contact with the next and I don't know, that works for me. So she's nearly done. So thank you, Patsy, for being a good girl. All right, still have my prairie hay in here for her. All right, this is the challenge we've been waiting for. Sweating it out here in the barn because of a couple of reasons. One, I don't have a fan going for the external noise factor. And two, I have my door it's over there somewhere. Door closed for the external noise factor. So I'm sweating it out pretty good here. So dun da da. Here's our challenge. All right. All right, Dottie. Here we go. She's kind of hunkering down. She gives a little kick in the beginning, a little bit more, hunkers down, and I just kind of, you know, vigorously scrub her up. All right, same thing. Dry her up. Tippy tappy. And real quick like, um, I'm gonna do the spray. So kind of spray everything. Okay. Bucket in one hand. Gonna make contact with her. Okay. And I'm grabbing for the one teat. And let me adjust this juice to we go um, there we go grabbing with one hand grabbing for the teat and I'm gonna set it down well I'm not gonna set it down just yet okay got the one side going got my lip this way okay all right I have milked Dottie a few times this season um, and you can feel like just then she did a little quick movement. I'm probably not gonna be keeping my eyes on the camera as much with her. I'm gonna be watching her feet at all times. You can feel her body shift. I've done this enough now that I can tell which foot, you know, where her body weight is sitting and which foot is gonna come up. And so sometimes I scoot my bucket to the right or the left, depending on Okay, and she's hugging me now a little bit. I don't mind that. I make sure the bucket is closer to me than it is to her. Her pressure's on this leg closest to me right now. So I can tell if she's going to kick or readjust, it's gonna be the other foot. So she's fairly full and she isn't as fast a milker as some. Um, not a big deal, but you just kind of have to ride it out. Now, <laughs> okay, one thing you have to be careful with, we don't, we have a, a wooden milk stand here. There's no drainage below her feet. Okay, she's hugging me too much, so I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna back away because she's leaning against me. Now I'm gonna push her. All the way over okay let her get her kind of square up and if she does this she's leaning into me well and if I have trouble getting my hand in there well then I'm gonna milk one teat for a while um, 
At any rate, we have a wooden milk stand, and so if there's any spillage or if you're not hitting the bucket, it lands here. So what that does is make for a slippery standing spot. So what I have found in my situation, because the milk doesn't drain, is that I will grab one of my towels here, push her over, I'm gonna lay it down. So that way she's got a good, good firm grip. Okay, all right, Dottie, there we go. Let's stay there. There we go. Okay, well, I knew she was gonna give you a challenge. So, yeah, <laughs> get over there. Okay, just leaning into it. Okay, regrip. One hand, I've got enough room here. I'm gonna grab for this one, and away we go. So, it will take longer with her, but it does get better, and it does get easier. As long as they know, just like most any other animal, that they're not going to get away with it. You're gonna finish your process and muster through it. Um, yes, I can, I'm pretty quick um, just because we've had a lot of spilt buckets. And even my best one sometimes, a fly gives a, you know, there's a quick flick with a fly or something and I'm comfortable in what I'm doing and you know, blammo, the milk goes everywhere. So. It still happens, and it's okay to cry over spilt milk. It's very sad with all of your hard work and your labor, and especially if you're running low for yourself or if you have a milk customer and it just went down the drain. So the kicking and flicking motion a lot of times is really to reach up and dislodge your hand from her teat. It's like, you know, that's uncomfortable and I'm not doing it. Now, a practice that some people do is called hobbling. And essentially what that is, is they're getting their goat on the stand and they are putting a tie down on one or both of their back legs. I did that with a goat that wasn't mine because she came and I took care of her while her owner was on vacation and that was what her owner had been doing. She had tried to work through it and just couldn't get it figured out so she put a tie down on one leg and secured it so that she just she so she couldn't get her foot much up off the ground she could still move it around a little bit and for her tying down one leg worked i have not had to do that um, i really don't want to do that because i want them to learn that this process um, can be just fine and usually they're pretty excited about the reward of food so because like I said I'm just going to remind you again that this is going to take longer with her and she's got her prairie hay in there I can feel her relaxing right now another little thing I do for knowing when she's going to flinch my right hand is up I'm gonna move this, is up like this against her body while I'm milking. So I'm making contact with her on that teat the whole time. So she knows what I'm doing, but it's also kind of a comforting thing. So when I grab with the teat, I'm not down here like this. I've actually got my whole arm up against her. Yeah, if I start pushing too much, she's gonna lean back my way again. So I'm gonna, Grab. I do best with starting with my right hand, holding my left, 
with the bucket, get it going, set it down, reach up, grab the next, and keep going. Now, she has gotten into a tap dancing fit, I call it before, where they just cannot stand the contact. It's just driving them crazy. So when that happens, you take a break with the bucket. You pull the bucket away, and I just place my hand firmly on the udder, and I don't let go until she settles down. Now, Dottie is nearing the end of the milking, so it hasn't been too bad. There have been many worse cases, and I'm sure you've experienced some. Um, she should settle in pretty well. Luckily, I haven't had a terrible, terrible first timer that hasn't ever been untouched. Uh, it's really nice to have your goats raised on your farm so that you can work with them from the time their babies. It makes a huge difference. All right, nearing the end here, Dottie. And since she, if they have their babies on them like she does, I'm not as concerned about getting every last drop off of here. And as soon as I let her out, I'm going to let her babies join up with her. So I'm, I'm gonna skip this. I don't need it. Um, the babies are, are gonna go over and take care of her, and so, or they're gonna at least try. They'll probably get a little squirt, but uh, she'll get, they'll get more through the day. So I, I don't want their first taste um, ingesting this. So. I'm gonna forego the teat dip with her. Okay, she did step off there. I'm just getting the last few squirts, so I'm gonna hold the bucket up and I'm gonna do it one-handed. And sometimes, I don't know why it is, but mine seem to um, have a reserve. It's kinda of like they're holding back a little bit for their babies. And all of a sudden, you get that second wave. You're like, where did that come from? The milk was nearly gone. And then all of a sudden, there's a little extra that shows up. So to finish her up, I just kind of go back and forth to catch it. But like I said, in my instance today, she's going to join up with her babies. And so I'm not worried about getting every last drop because they will. Okay. Yeah, that was a good one. She, so they, they can raise it up nearly as high as where their knee is. Okay, this is the tap dancing stuff that will go on. And I, I'd like to show you, but at the same time, I really don't want to encourage any bad behavior with her. But I can kind of touch her or tickle her and see. So if she were to be really tap dancing... I'll put my hand and I'll sit here just like this and just hold her udder so that she knows to calm down. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not losing any contact. Now, lastly, if you've got somebody out that out here milking or watching, observing uh, one of your, your children or spouse, Something that my goats will do is also step off the other side. Um, I am sitting. There's me standing. So my milk stand is about at my knee, knee height. Some are a lot lower, but mine is actually at a nice um, sitting height. That's because my husband made it for me. So anyway, they can step off. They're not going to strangle themselves or hang themselves when they do but it's uncomfortable so if they continue to keep going the other way and not hugging you um lucas come here stand right here and turn your back please okay so if they're going that way that's what i have my children do if they keep going that way and they keep running away and i'm 
keep leaning over onto the stand. If you've got a helper, I will have them stand there and just put their back and they don't need to keep trying to push them. It, it just doesn't work. So they just act as a barrier by leaning up against because see, as soon as I push on her, she leans in further and that will happen over there, but at least it keeps them from stepping off and, and causing more problems. Was you a good girl, Belle? She was a pretty good girl. She didn't do as bad as I thought she would. For your sake, I kind of wish she did a little bit worse, but that's all right. That's, that's not really what I want. But uh, I, I did have a challenge. Mm -hmm. I did have a challenge earlier this year, and I wish I would have started with her because she truly was a first freshener and had never been up on the milk stand before. So it did take me, like I said, the better part of two weeks before everything was really good. But just hanging in there with her, she did just leaps and bounds better after five days. Just pushing through, usually making sure she was my last goat on the stand uh, instead of my first. Um, but, you know, if you'd rather get that discouraging one out of the way, by all means do it. So, see, she is still content here. Um, pretty much, it's just the prairie hay that's in here, but little bits of the feed have fallen down through there. So, this has kept her content. She's still searching for the feed. And that is one of the biggest things. Have you ever seen those bowls they make for dogs that have the little bobbles built into it so that the dogs don't just inhale their food? That's kind of what this is for the goats right here, is that it's, you know, it's busy work, giving them something to do, and it's stretching your food so you're not going through uh, a bag of feed your first week in trying this, so. Bill? Dottie. Dottie. Wrong goat. The other one's a sister. Dottie. Are you ready? Yeah. See? She's good. Hi, Dottie. You were a good girl. There's my towel still laying there. So if you make a mess, and that's how you keep from wasting all your time running back and forth cleaning it up. Is everybody ready to feed their babies? Are you ready, Daisy? Are we ready? The babies are waiting. Oh, man. Are we ready? Is anybody a... Uh, a Princess Bride fan. We wees the weapons. It's a frantic frenzy. Where's mama? Where's my mama? <laughs> and they get what they can. And they'll be just fine. Right, go go. Right, sugar baby? They'll be fine. They'll get a little bit of a sip, and then the rest of the day is on them. So it really has helped out. And we got that idea from some other people, but when we saw a YouTube video that like Justin Rhodes was doing with their cows, we thought, you know, we need to revisit this and, and rethink this. So it really does help out so that you don't have to milk twice a day. Are you okay, Emma? You got your hair cut, but you're hiding. I don't blame you.
Are you curious what we're feeding our goats? Well, we're happy to share. We have changed up our routine from our milking routine last year and our ingredients and what we shared and we're always looking to better our goats, better our situation, better our pocketbook, you know, all the way around. Uh, so we have come upon something and it might do it in reverse. I forget that with the camera. Anyway, you can tell this is alfalfa. This is chaff hay. And at any rate, um, this bag is a 50 pound bag that is vacuum sealed and it is fermented alfalfa. In our area, runs about $15 for a 50 pound bag. And the idea with it being fermented is that their gut isn't working as hard and a happier, healthier gut in your goat, any animal, yourself even, that is where all of the goodness happens or the badness happens either way. So we have been trying and searching different ways better ways to feed our goats that doesn't break our pocketbook and helps keep them healthier, um, help keep them stronger against parasites or, or other sickness. So the alfalfa has been vacuum sealed in this, in this bag. It's fermented. It, sometimes you can see as you look through, you're like, mm, you know, this looks a little bit moldy. No, no, um, it's guaranteed and it's all good. It's like, it's like the digestion has already started to happen for them. So they're getting the best of it as opposed to, let's say alfalfa pellets. So the pressed pellet as it goes in, if you've ever taken alfalfa pellets and just poured water over it and see how it just, it, it takes a while. Um, how it turns into mush. So, you know, that's kind of the idea with human supplements too. If you can get it in liquid or a capsule, that the capsule dissolves and it's much better than the hard pressed pills where you don't really know if it's being dissolved or if you're getting it. Same sort of concept. The alfalfa has been fermented and you should be getting the best of it. Um, this is my bucket that's preloaded here. I've got some barley. Um, so we've been doing barley and this is what the chaff hay looks like. And it smells great too. So that has really been a key component for us this year. And we feed it on the milk stand and everybody gets a rotation through here. And so they all get a little bit of it, but I don't mass feed it. I wanna make sure each goat is giving, you know, getting what they need. So that can be a little bit of a chore, but I've figured that out too. Um, other tips are loose minerals. Two that you should always have out are baking soda and salt. And if you can get a hold of loose salt, loose salt is a little better than the block because if they're really craving the salt, they're going to lick that block. They're going to lick and lick and lick and they're not going to get what they need fast enough. And if you're providing a, a well-rounded loose mineral, sometimes they will chow it too much to get at the salt that's in your multi-mineral. So baking soda, it's kind of like their natural tums, especially if you're switching pastures. That happens to mine a lot, that it's like they're getting a lot of green or a lot of moisture, um, feeling a little bloated. So it's free choice. It's in the barn all the time. They have salt loose. They have uh, the baking soda loose. I do have a salt block sitting out. We did that and we've switched, but I haven't taken them away. Um, so that's okay, they're cheap. They don't cost much, but it, by having the loose salt, it really does detour from gobbling the multi-mineral. So that's the other thing I have is a multi-mineral so they can get all the things they need from the uh, copper, uh, selenium, um, phosphates, just everything in there. There's always a little bit of salt. Some of them have a little bit of kelp, but that's the last thing that we've decided to offer free choice is kelp. So we've also mixed a little bit of DE or Demacious Earth in with the kelp. Um, I can't say tried and true that DE has done it for us and we can't get them to eat it separately. So we mix it in with the kelp 
And so we have four different things set out. And all I can say is with doing what we are this year, um, everybody's been about the healthiest we've ever had for the year. Still not completely warding off the parasites, but um, yeah, body composition looks good. They look healthy, but there's still some things that you, you have to keep track of. So maybe this will give you some ideas and maybe you can look for some things in your area. Who's that knock, knock, knocking on my door? Who's that peck, peck, pecking? What you doing in there, chicken? Cleaning up after the goats. Okay, a um, couple more things that I wanted to share with everybody. I know lots of people have shared um, their go-to's and these are a couple of books that are my go-to's. Um, the first one is Natural Goat Care by Pat Colby. That one, you can see I've got lots of bookmarks in there for different things. This is kind of where we decided on what we were going to try and feed this year and what was available in our area. So that's the first one. Then my second one is the Goat Keepers Veterinary Book. And this is the fourth edition. So that is very important. I believe that is the latest or newest one. Both of these have British or Australian um, authors, and so sometimes the jargon, <laughs> pardon me, sometimes the jargon is a little bit different or what they're recommending, but you can tell. But these two are um, my go-tos because I like having the natural side if I can conquer something with a more holistic approach, but here's the need to know with what's going on. Sometimes one thing is addressed in one book and, and not in the other. So you gotta, have, you gotta have your facts with the medical side, with what's going on, and maybe there's a solution that you can try this way, or maybe there isn't. So, but uh, these two have, have been um, my go-tos and I really like them. So I will link them down below. We've got like our little Amazon link. And so we will put those up to make it um, easy for you to find. Okay, just wanted to go through my list and go over a few things. Doors open, cause it's too hot. I can't take it anymore. Um, first thing is when you're starting with a goat, Put something like prairie hay, your alfalfa, your brome, whatever you like to use, put it in their feed trough first as a filler. And then whatever you like to use, put it on top so that it will kind of filter and they have to sift through it. So that's a big tip, number one, to help stretch your feed and stretch your time, their attention span. Um, you're gonna have spills. You're gonna have lots of spills um, or missing indirect shots. So if you're like me and your stand doesn't have holes for the milk to drain, keep extra rags out here either when you come out or you know keep them somewhere that you can throw one down and it gives them traction and you can keep going without too much delay in your process. Um, also, if you're milking, even if you're milking one goat right now and you have that unruly goat, you want to have two containers. Here's my milking pail that I'm going to milk into, but I showed you my other storage with a lid on it. While you're working with a goat that is likely to spill, stick their foot in it, etc., you still want your storage uh, container here because if you have some success and it's going pretty well, but you know, things are a little iffy, stop. Stop, pour your milk into your storage unit and 
put the lid on so this milk is safe. So as I was saying before the goat yelling, this way some of your milk is safe. I did that with Luna a lot in the beginning when I started having success, but I knew towards the end was kind of her issue. And as I'm trying to strip out the last of it, then what I would do is save this and I would get it put away and then I would come back and finish. And that way, just that last little bit, you know, if it's, if nothing happens, then great, you've got it. If it does, then it literally can go to the dogs. So that's, that's another tip. Um, this isn't really with unruly goats, but what I like to do to keep my progression going is I have several buckets that I have my feet in and I set them off to the side so I can zip through it and do one and pour it in and one and pour it in so that I don't really have to stop much um, to reload. So that's, that's a nice thing, especially if your situation is like mine and they know it's their turn and different ones keep squeezing in. Um, if, if you do get somebody and you're shoving them out, well, then you can get, you've got the food ready and you can throw it in really quickly and, and keep going with what you're doing. Order, order is important. If you have a milking order, try to do it with your, like your alpha or your hierarchy and work down. Um, that's important and stay with that order because if you let somebody squeeze in, by golly, they're going to know it and you're going to be dealing with that for at least another week because it worked once, so it might work again. Um, so order is important. Remember, no tickling. Um, scrub it like your grandma. <laughs> Dry them off like your grandma. Um, Keep contact. I, I don't grab like this. I make whole arm contact. I happen to be on this side of the goat. And so as I'm reaching across, I make contact with my, my whole arm and the firm contact. No tickle, no, you know, no little uh, wussy grabs here. Be firm about it and confident in what you're doing. If you need to milk one-handed with your bucket, that is just fine. Do that. Hopefully you don't have to do that all the time, but while you're working through the process, you could do that. If they're really bad, maybe you don't want a bucket. Maybe you want a small mouthed container, um, a, a mason jar the right size, something just big enough to hold up and milk into that container. It's gonna limit you to one-handed milking, but if that's what you have to do to be the winner and be success successful with it, then do that for a while. That's another tip. Um, and then when they're all done, and if you're using your teat dip, same thing. By golly, you know, hold and make contact with them, with their udder before you do the teat dip. Uh, because another thing, it's, it's just so annoying and irritating and you want everything to be as positive as it can on the stand. Um, I know there's times where you just want to pull your hair out or slap your goat, um, but you're not going to win by doing that. So hopefully these little tips helped. Uh, I may have forgotten something that I shared in the video, but these... These are the things that have helped me endure and get through and have happy goats and happy milking. So hope this all helps and thank you for watching Chickawoo French.